we need to be thinking a lot about what's important to our operations people, our engineering people, our manufacturing people, legal, safety, finance. How do we translate the customer voice into meaningful actions or meaningful insights that guide them as expectations VOC for their performance standards and continually raising the bar in the way that we produce the realities for customers. Because let's face it, the bar is continually increasing for their expectations unless we're continually raising the bar in the realities that we're, we're delivering, we're going to always be behind the curve. So you can see what I'm calling here on the right-hand corner is experience leadership, company-wide alignment to customer, employee, and partner expectations because we rely on these groups, customers, employees, and partners to fuel our business. When their performance sags and everything sags, we really need their performance to be top notch. And so we need to be thinking about how do we close the gap between their aim and our aim. So we're both aiming at the same thing. And this is what I mean by managing to those expectations and closing the gap. So the next step is customer focus strategy and customer centricity. You need to take this customer intelligence, customer lifetime value. Now the value actually prioritizes um, what to work on first, as well as um, right sizing your effort and apply it to your corporate strategy, apply it to the way that people think and do. So anything that you have in your company that's shaping the way that people think, your training, your onboarding, your uh, inner, your incentives, your rewards, your, your reviews of all kinds, your per permissions and approvals of all kinds, those shape people's thinking and doing. So be injecting, embedding the customer intelligence and lifetime value insights into all of those, and that's how you shape the culture and the strategy. Next is customer experience improvement and innovation, which includes human-centered design. So improvement means getting to the root cause of those issues that are prevail prevalent in the customer experience that are tied strongly to loyalty. So we do a correlation analysis, a Pareto analysis to identify the, the, the vital few. And we let go of these quick wins as the obsession. Uh, we need to let go of those quick wins as an obsession because they're derailing us from making the big gains associated with vital few. And then what this leads to is engaging your internal people commensurate with what you're expecting to engage externally or more because your internal people, bread and butter, you know, their, their livelihood, their, their salaries, their budgets, the dividends for investors are all dependent upon customers preferring your brand. And therefore, we need to be really bold and engaging people, but we need to be clever about it and make sure that the, the way that we're sharing the customer experience insights and driving the improvement and innovation actually fits into people's jobs, that it fits into the existing meetings, reviews, recognition, rewards, improvement efforts, decision-making, handoffs, insert your customer experience stuff into what they're doing. And this is how you get that strong engagement. Now we had over a hundred action plans going on simultane simultaneously during several years of boom growth. I mean, we had hockey stick growth happening and it was hard to keep people's attention on improving customer experience. And yet we made major strides. So here we have the expectations, the realities, and the performance. And we're over-focused on performance right now in the way that we're managing customer experience. That needs to be, that needs to be unlearned. We need to relearn focusing on the expectations and the realities. And by doing that, what this model says is that the retention, the loyalty, and the business results are automatic byproducts to a large degree of putting this model in place. So essentially, this is the customer experience uh, uh, secret uh, for strategy. And let's just compare this to what's happening now. What's happening now is people are really focused on things like net promoter score and other metrics that are, you know, 
really out of the control of, of managers. They're things that customers are doing and saying they might do, but they're not about what we're doing. And the focus is touch point heavy. Measure, 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 customer voice, engage, 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 customer voice, as well as uh, other things, uh, pr promoting things, uh, social media and, and other recommendations and so forth. And then retention, loyalty, business results. It's like stepping on the scale, uh, the bathroom scale constantly, and then expecting things to change. And you can't get there if you don't have the activity in, uh, in the middle. So we have net promoter score, customer effort score, CRM, customer relationship management, journey mapping, human center design, product experience, user experience, brand experience, digital experience, and then customer service, customer success, first contact resolution, customer data platforms, customer centered marketing, uh, experiential marketing, marketing operations, revenue operations, and loyalty programs. That is an army of activity. No wonder it's hard to show ROI because we're investing so much in all of these CX programs without having the middle of this sandwich filled in and, and robust. Who wants to go to a sandwich shop and just get bread? This reminds me, when I looked at this and I saw the, you know, the, the two endpoints, it reminded me of that old Wendy's commercial from the 1980s, where's the beef? So the real juicy part of this equation is in the middle. That's the delicious part. That's the part that creates those realities that our customers depend upon us for. So what you need to do in 2023 strategy, the unpracticed best practices, I've mentioned quite a few of them already, but re um, turn your emphasis to the yellow boxes, customer centricity, customer focused corporate strategy, internal engagement, customer intelligence and lifetime value, customer experience improvement and innovation. We've been doing a lot of the other stuff. We have not been doing enough of this stuff. And when we have done it, it's been cherry picked or uh, you know, very focused to certain groups. It hasn't really been an all out full team sport. And furthermore, we really haven't done a great job of identifying employee expectations, partner expectations, or customer expectations, and driving the closure of the gaps, making a one-to-one -one ratio. So in creating your customer experience strategy, you might adopt this customer value quotient in the lower right corner and emphasize that as much or more than your effort scores promoter scores and whatnot, because this gives you demerits for the time for every time that uh, you uh, mess up on the expectations. Every time that customers need need help or uh, have have some kind of problem, then that's a demerit because, uh, in fact, you know, the ratio between realities and expectations was not met. So this is hard to do. I experience it myself in my own business that I'm not 100% perfect at this yet, but we're striving toward it. And that's what this is about. So what this means is that instead of focusing your customer experience strategy on all these programs, focus your programs and your strategy on all the people in the organization that you've hired to create value for customers. And that means engaging every group in doing their part, sharing expectations VOC with them as their performance standards, injecting customer experience criteria into all of your rituals that I've mentioned, the way that people are rewarded and approved and, and uh, developed and, and so forth, the way that products and services are, are uh, developed and approved. And as we do that, we'll be seeing a closure of this, this gap, a strategy of trust we need to regain trust in business. It's really low. 44% of people do not trust publicly owned companies and 33% don't trust private uh, family owned companies. So that's just really hard. How can you be really successful in customer experience when we're already at, starting at a, such a disadvantage of low trust in organizations?
Thanks for joining me today. Let's keep in touch.